Good morning, young persons. Welcome back to the High School Wood Shop. We're making a series of videos that covers the machines, materials, and the techniques that we use in the High School Wood Shop. In this segment, we're talking about the table saw. This is saw stock cabinet model. It's a great machine. It's a belt drive for very smooth cuts. Works fine, lasts a long time. Won't rust, bust, or collect dust. The first thing I'm going to do is point out some of the parts and pieces on the machine, just make you a little bit more familiar with it. This is the blade, of course. This is miter gauge slot. There's one on each side of the blade. This here is the fence. Of course, this is the table that the saw is named after. We, on the fence itself, we have a fence lock. So when you set it where you want it and you push this down, the fence won't move. We have a couple of uh, hand crank wheels on the front of the machine. There's one on the right and there's one on the front. The one on the right is the one that changes the angle of the blade relative to the table. In the center of the wheel, there's a knob that locks it in place. So if you're gonna make several cuts at the same angle and you wanna make sure it doesn't move because of vibration or whatever, uh, you can lock it down in that place using the blade angle lock. It's a knob in the center of the crank. machine, we have the blade elevation crank or blade height crank and it also has a knob in the center. With the knob in the center, you can lock it down so that it stays at the same height without moving due to vibration or whatever. Also, we have a on-off switch over here. You turn this machine on by pulling out on the bottom of the power switch. Turn it off by pushing it back in. Okay, remember, our first step is always going to be to prepare ourselves before we use the machine. That means that if you're tired or sick or under the influence, then uh, let's choose a different day uh, to use this machine. Another thing, of course, is that you're always going to have on safety glasses using this machine. Our second step is going to be to prepare the machine. You're going to want to make sure that the machine is uh, clean and swept up around it. You don't want to have any tripping hazards in front of the machine while you're using it. It might cause a problem. Notice that there is an outfeed table on this machine so that if you're running a long board through, it's, the weight of the board is supported by the outfeed table. What you're going to do as far as setting up the machine is to set the height of the blade. The height of the blade should be one eighth to one quarter of an inch above the height of the material or approximately one tooth on the saw blade. Okay, one of the rules with the table saw is that we don't generally use the miter gauge with the fence at the same time. Um, this is a miter gauge and it is used for making a cross cut on the table saw and it's an imperfect science. We uh, generally use the miter saw to uh, make a cross cut, but that's a different video. The rule is, as far as safety is concerned, that we're not going to run the, um, use the miter gauge with the fence at the same time. And it looks like this. No. There are a few times when we actually do want to run a miter gauge with a fence, in spite of everything I just told you. We use a special setup. It looks like this. Notice that the, the off cut is past the edge of the uh, block that we're using to set it off on the fence. So there's nothing for it to bind against. Okay, we're still talking about setting up the machine. 
We don't want to line up our body with the saw blade. One of the uh, primary hazard is something called kickback. And what it is is that as a piece of material is passing between the saw blade and the fence, that binding occurs. And when this binding occurs, because the blade is moving this direction, you know, the top of the blade is coming towards you, it's gonna, it's gonna grab that piece of material and it's gonna shoot it backwards at a high rate of speed. Is that this fence must be parallel to the blade. That could be checked uh, a lot of different ways. We could uh, use a tape measure and uh, measure the front of the blade and then measure the back of the blade and make sure that they're the same. Mm -hmm. I, I verify that before you use the machine, but you just need to know the fence must be parallel to the blade or your worst nightmare is gonna come true on this machine. So one of the ways that we mitigate the hazard of kickback on the machine is don't line up your body with where the piece would be flying if that were to happen. So you're gonna cut your material like this. I'm not gonna stand right behind the board and push it through. I'm going to stand with my body off to the side and I'm going to ensure that the board stays tight against the fence. That means no gap, no gap. As you're running the board through the machine, there should not be a gap appear here. So, no gap. And the way that you're going to prevent the gap from occurring is to be watching the right place as the board goes through. Many times when I'm standing watching you cut the board, I will see students stare at the whirling circle of death over here. But that is going to cause your worst nightmare to come true. Where you need to be watching is over here and ensure that no gap appears. We will talk at length about how you place your fingers. I want to set my hand so that my fingers are holding the material against the fence and I put my thumb on top to keep the material from coming up like this. So as I'm running the material through and I see a gap start to appear, we're just going to shut the machine, hold the material in place and shut the machine off and start over. Because if you continue with the gap, you will have a kickback. Okay, another thing that we can do to mitigate the hazard of kickback is that the person operating the saw is responsible to check and make sure that there's no one behind the saw as he's using it. You'll have your material sitting over here. Before you turn on the power switch, you're gonna check behind you and make sure that this area is clear that there's no one standing back there. Again, to use the machine correctly, make sure that you don't allow your offcuts to build up around the saw. You should clean off as you go. This is unacceptable for using the machine in this shape with all this stuff stacked up here. When we're talking about kickback on the table saw, be reminded that the piece that's going to give you trouble is the piece that's between the blade and the fence. Your offcut, the one that's on the left side of the blade, on the side of the blade opposite the fence, is not going to go anywhere because there's nothing for it to bind against. It'll just sit there. It's this piece between the blade and the fence that would be kicked back if kickback were to occur. Another rule that we have with the table saw is that we're never gonna stack our work pieces. And what that means is, for example, let's just say you wanna cut both of these pieces to the same width, and we're thinking, well, I'll save a little bit of time, I'll just raise up the blade, and now I could make both cuts at the same time, right? I mean, if I'm careful, right? No, that's a horrible idea. It's going to cause your worst fears to come true. Don't do that. We don't stack the work pieces when we're cutting. We can stack the work pieces on a machine like the miter saw commonly and without uh, danger, but we don't do that on the table saw. So far what we've been talking about is dealing with the uh, hazard of kickback on the table saw, but the second one 
which is just as important, is don't let your fingers come in contact with the blade. I mean, I know that seems obvious, but um, I see students do things like they'll have their finger lined up on the blade, their fingers like this, and they're moving their hand towards the saw blade. Don't move your hand towards the saw blade. Never move your hand towards the blade on any machine here. My hand should be back out of the way and not lined up with the saw blade. So as I'm cutting something on the machine, I'm going to leave my hand in one place to hold it down on the table and to hold it tight against the fence. And I'm going to slide the material underneath it like this so that my hand is not moving towards the blade. When we're talking about keeping your fingers from contacting the blade when the machine's running, one of the rules that we have is that if the fence is going to be closer than six inches to the blade or about the width of your hand, you must use a push stick. We have a push stick here and it's always sitting right here on top of the fence. And the purpose of this is to keep your hand away from the blade. So you're going to cut something on the machine. It's obviously less than six inches. And so you know you're going to be using a push stick. Before you begin, make sure the push stick is available on right here. Don't start the cut. You need the push stick and someone left it over there on a different table. So my push stick is available right here. I start to make the cut. I'm sliding it through. Once this end of the board is on the table, like that, I hold it in place with my left hand. I'm gonna pick up the stick. I'm gonna push it forward. Once it gets out from underneath my fingers, I'll put my hand behind my back and I continue the cut like that. Notice that my hand should be 10 to 12 inches above the blade. I have seen persons, young persons, run, use the push stick like this where they're shoving it through and they have their hand like this very close. The reason why this push stick is so long to keep your hand this far away from the blade. So don't run it through at a low angle so that your fingers are just an inch or two above the blade. Keep the angle up high like this. We have two different types of push uh, sticks. We also have a this version here, which is uh, better for certain applications, and we'll talk about it when you actually use the machine, but this one here works the same way. As you're running the material, once this end of the board is on the table like that, I'm holding it in place. I pick up my push stick, and I push it through like that. What are your questions? I've seen kickback occur many times in my shop, and the way it usually happens is, is that the person running the saw will release their hand from the material before it's all the way past the blade. So when you're making a cut on the saw like this, you're holding your hand in place, you're not moving it towards the blade, and they push the material to about here and they let go. And what's gonna happen is, is the blade is gonna catch the side of the board and it's gonna shoot it that direction, which is dangerous. So the rule is when you're making your cut on the table saw is that you're going to run your material until it's all the way past the edge of the blade. The table saw makes a very distinctive sound when it's being run properly and if something's going wrong the sound of the machine is going to change and everybody in the shop is going to be used to what the correct sound is and they're going to turn and look at you if something's going wrong. If the blade starts to slow down and the sound is changing, it's, it's probably because you're pushing the material through the machine uh, with too much force and you just need to slow down your feed rate a little bit. You also want to make sure it's not because the blade is binding. When you're running your material through the saw and you get to a certain point and maybe the sound is changing or something doesn't seem right, you're not going to back the material off the blade while it's moving. We have an on-off paddle switch and you're going to reach over while you hold the material firmly and bump the switch off with your leg. Let the machine come to a complete stop and then back it off the blade. Do not back it off the blade with the blade turning. We already talked about how to change the angle of the blade and we call that type of cut either a bevel cut or a chamfer cut. If you're going to make a bevel cut and you have the blade at an angle, 
The fence must be on the right side of the blade so that the angle is up and away from the fence. We're never going to make a chamfer cut or a bevel cut with the fence with, on the left side of the blade with the blade leaning into the fence because that's going to make it a lot easier for the material to bind. Finally, when you're done cutting your board, make sure that the blade has come to a complete stop before you reach over and grab your board or your off cut. I ain't playing with you. Okay, our step five in correctly using the machine is called dealing with the unexpected. And there are unexpected things that can happen when you're using the machine. It doesn't really matter what your experience level is. The classic one, of course, is as you're using the machine, and right when you get to the most critical part, one of your so-called friends is going to come up and tap you on the shoulder and try to say something to you. The key is going to be to make sure that you complete the cut before you respond to the person or otherwise. Don't let your attention be deflected from what you're doing when you're running this machine or you will pay the price. Any person that comes up to you and taps you on the shoulder when you're running a machine in here, they are not your friend. Other things that might be unexpected when we're running this machine is, is as we already talked about, the sound of the machine may change when you're cutting. It could be that you're cutting through a knot or that you've hit a nail. It could be that the material is binding on the blade and the, the sound changing on the machine is letting you know that something's going wrong. Once again, reach over, hold the material firmly in place, stop forward movement, let the machine shut down, let the blade come to a complete stop, back off your work, and let's figure out what happened. Call me, call me your instructor over, and we'll see what's up. I'll help you. The last step, step number six, is this. Use common sense. When I talk to you about not lining up your hand with the saw blade, or don't move your hand towards the saw blade, I would expect that to be common sense. I will be standing right here next to the saw as a student is using it, and I see them moving their hand towards the blade, and I'm thinking, really? Are you just going to run your hand into the blade right now, right in front of me? So I saw four fingers. Unbelievable. Use common sense. If something doesn't seem right, if something doesn't feel right or sound right, if you're not comfortable, then stop. Ask me again. Step back and watch another student use the machine, and then you can see if that helps. Ask me, I will run it through for you. I will show you again and again. I do not want you to use this machine or any other machine in here unless you're comfortable and you know what's gonna happen next. What are your questions? Talk on it. Let's do something cool. Once this end of the board is on the table like that, I'm holding it in place. I pick up my push stick and I push it through like that. What are your questions?